Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Shoots with Coops. And today we're talking about surf photography, film film surf photography, and the Nikon F100. Uh, it's what I use. A lot of people use this camera, and I get a lot of questions about surf photography, film photography, and surf photography in general. Now, since I did my Nikonos 5 video years and years and years ago, there was not many or if any on the web. Somehow I've become an authority on the subject and people seem to send me messages all the time. Now I'm not a pro. I don't get paid to shoot surf photography. I don't do it for a living. I wish that would be a dream come true. Uh, but somehow I've become an authority on it. God knows why. Uh, there are people out there and I will link some Instagram accounts to people I know who are really good surf photographers who use film still, and they are probably better authorities on the subject than me. So if you have any other serious questions, reach out to these guys, check out their work. Uh, but today I wanna to talk about you know this genre, this is my passion, surfing, especially schlick old single fins like this, I love single fins, and film photography, I love the two, and being able to combine the two uh, is amazing. I love doing it, I think being a surfer First, before a long time before I got into photography, definitely helps you with surf photography because you know how to read the swell, read the waves, position, read surfers, know what's going to happen in the water, be safe in the water, and that definitely helps you be a better surf photographer. But why the F100? The F100 seems to be the most popular choice, and for good reason. I, there's a lot of reasons why I think this camera is such a popular choice when it comes to surf photography and film. Now, the F100, quick backstory, this thing does everything you need it to do. Came out in 95, was gone by 2005, 2006, but every feature you need, this thing has. It has autofocus, it only has five autofocus points, but it has autofocus and it works great. You've got Nikon's proprietary matrix metering, which is amazing and you rarely ever get underexposed frames with this camera. You've got you know, a max one eight, one eight thousandth of a second max shutter speed, plenty fast enough to freeze any action with this camera. It does, you know, what, five frames a second or something like that? Plenty fast enough to get, get some sequences, not on today's standards, but again, you're not, most people aren't shooting those kind of burst rates with film because you go through a roll in, you know, in six sec, five seconds, six seconds, you're done. Anyway, has a lot of great features going for it. Um, another reason, the lens selection for this camera you've got access to all the modern Nikon G series lenses. So for instance, this is the 50 millimeter 1.8 G. It works, it autofocuses, it autofocuses fast on this camera. Uh, even though this camera was the era of the D series lenses still, all the AF, uh, AFG, whatever, all the new lenses work. You zoom lenses with VR, you know, modern Tamron lenses, anything for the Nikon F mount will work and autofocus with this camera. Another reason it's so popular is because you've got those cameras, guys, but, uh, those lenses, but you also have access to all the D series lenses from that pre, you know, pre Nikon era. So on the lens mount here, it's actually got that little, you can probably barely see it, but that's the little screw drive screw that connects to the D series lenses, allowing you to autofocus and use all those sorts of D series cheaper lenses. And they are a lot cheaper on this camera as well. It does everything you need it to do, guys. Um, and it's perfect for the genre of surf photography, whether you're shooting from land or in, in the water in a housing like I like to do. Now, there are some other options, and, and, and I'm going to go through those because there's a reason, I think there's a reason why people gravitate to the F100 and not these other options. Your next closest option, the Nikon F5, which this is the baby brother of the F5. The F5 was the pro version, this was the prosumer version in 98, 99 when they came out. Nikon F5 is fantastic, but it is bigger, it is heavier, it does have an in, inbuilt battery grip. If you were just shooting like sports action on film um, or, or surf from the land, great camera, get it. But the problem with the F5 is it most likely you will struggle if there is even any uh, water housings that will accommodate that camera in the water. It's just too big. Even if you remove the prism, I have tried, remove the top prism, you still can't fit it in a water housing. So that's out, Nick F100 wins. Nikon F6, oh, if I could afford one, I would have one. The F6 is the greatest film SLR ever made. It does more than this, it's more capable than this, but it's also about five times the price of this. You can get a second, I just looked this morning, 
There's a mint secondhand F100 for sale locally, 360 Australian dollars, and it's mint. No sticky rubber grip, you know, looks absolutely schmick. Cheap. The cheapest F6 you can find, it's probably about $1,800, $1,900 I see them going for. Since Nikon discontinued them, the prices went through the roof. Collectors started getting their hands on them because, you know, the end of the era, the last film SLR, they're just appreciating in value. If I could afford one, I'd get one, but they are just too expensive. And the F100 does not anywhere near what that can do, but it does enough, enough. It does enough. It's a great camera. The F6 is just better autofocus, faster frame rates, things like that. Next is your Nikonos V cameras, Nikonos 5, 4, which is what I started with. They are fantastic cameras. Uh, they're getting a bit long in the tooth. They're getting really old now, but they still work a treat and they're still amazing. Uh, the problem is uh, they're getting expensive as well. The other problem with those is, is getting replacement O-rings, for instance, like the, the seals for the back of the camera. Because once the camera, if the, if the O-rings are damaged and those cameras flood, especially the five, the four and the five, which have the light meters built in, they're buggered. Once the salt water gets in, they're pretty much shot and everything starts to corrode. And, you know, after it's flooded, it might only last a very short amount of time before everything goes. Um, and they're getting expensive. I see some people trying to sell like a kit for $1,000. And I think that's just maddening when the first one of those I bought was $80. $80 and now, oh, insane. But they are an awesome camera and they have, you know, been around for a long time. They're fantastic. But if you're serious, then this is the way to go because one, having autofocus, having faster frame rates in the water, it's definitely going to help you capture and shutter speeds. They make those max out at one one thousandth, one eight thousandth, much better capturing uh, fast action with these, you know, with the F100 compared to the Nikonos cameras. Uh, I still think they're great, but as a more professional, more capable tool, the F100 just beats it hands down. The next is a, is a, is a grail camera, the Nikonos RS, which is like, if you've never heard of it, look it up and it will blow your mind. It's essentially almost like an F100 that's just built to go underwater. Like it's, you know, water sealed, it's all underwater rated, um, auto focuses, uh, manual, uh, automatic advance. Like it's like an almost... It's very similar to the F100. It's just bigger, but it, it's fantastic. It's like a purpose-built underwater camera. Problem is very expensive. Main problem I find for those is most of the lenses, to my knowledge, I could be wrong, but they're designed to be shot underwater, not above the water. I think there's only one lens, a 50 mil, that's designed to actually be shot above the water. So you're really limited on lens selection with that camera, and it's so expensive. So I don't really think that's a fantastic option unless you're a diver and you're diving and shooting fishies, that's what that's for. The next comparable cameras are the Canon cameras of the same era, obviously. Now you've got the, the EOS 3, the EOS 33, the EOS 1 and 1V or 1N. Same sort of cameras, same set of features, do a great job, can recommend those. The problem is they are much more expensive and not as readily available on the secondhand market, I've found. And generally, you're going to find with those cameras, like the EOS, I think I just saw one recently, like an EOS one, it was like a thousand bucks or something. It's a bit much, I personally think. But again, the Canon lenses, like that will work with all your L series lenses, your USM lenses, all those. But Canon lenses tend to be a little bit more expensive for whatever reason than the Nikon equivalents. So I feel like if you're on a budget, uh, the F100 more readily available, more lens selections, because you know how Canon went from one mount to the next mount and the next mount? God knows why. At least the F100 is just F mount and there's so many lenses for it. So it wins hands down there. All right, guys, so now we're on to the fun part, and that is housings. Now, I'll quickly say again off the bat, the you know, F100, uh, cheaper alternative to some of the other cameras because a housing is another big expense you have to consider when you want to do this sort of thing. Again, that's why the Nikonos 4, 5, 3, they're all such great cameras because they're just ready to go. Straight in the water, you're gone, you're good to go. Now, with the housing, you have several brands to look at. Now, first of all, I'll talk about the two I don't have and then I'll go over what I do have and I have experience with. First of all, you have a brand called Salty Surf Housings. Now, these guys actually do make a F100 housing that you can order directly from them you know, brand new, and they'll make it for you. Uh, it comes with a, the pistol grip, lens port, made out of aluminium, very heavy duty. Uh, pricing is about $1,800 to $2,000. You know, pretty steep, 
but you can order that brand new. Next, we have a company called Liquid Eye Housings. Lots of people use those, you know, been around for a long time, good reputation, good history. You can't get a dedicated F100 housing for that, but you, uh, like I said, well, like I haven't said yet, actually, uh, the camera that's most you know closely related to this, I would say, would be the Nikon D500 in size and in cables. So the 10-pin adapter that goes on the front of the F100 to trigger the remote, trigger your autofocus and shutter release in the housings, same as the D500, same as the D850. So if you get a modern housing and choose the plate kit for the D500 with the liquid eye, you'll be able to use your housing. Obviously, none of the buttons on the back of the... Um, no, no, this option I'm looking at is the cheaper option with no back plate controls. That is do 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 $1,600 to get that housing from liquid eye to be able to use your F100. Now, what I have and what I've always used is Aquatech housings. Uh, Aquatech have been around for a long, long, long time. You can actually find old secondhand housings that were made for the F100 from Aquatech. Uh, they've been around for a long, long time, but they did make dedicated film SLR housings. They did make one for the F100. What I have is the Elite Base 2 housing. So the Elite series, uh, which have now unfortunately been superseded and you can't buy them brand new anymore. The Elite Base housings with a new, new design, uh, but the back plate has no control functions for your camera. Just, you know, the release uh, cable plate goes into the camera and you shoot no actual access to controls which you don't need. And I think most modern housings, unless you're a videographer shooting video in the water, you do need access to be able to change, uh, you know, your frame rates, your shutter angle, that sort of stuff. Shooting photography, not so much. You know, you can set your settings and then go into the water. And generally with film, by the time you shot one roll, you can come in, change settings if need be. Uh, but that's the, the version I have. It was $1,500 brand new and it came with the pistol grip, uh, pistol trigger and the lens port. Now you have been superseded by the uh, Reflex housings with Aquatech, which are only $1,000 for the base D500, D850 version, which comes with the cable, but you do still need to buy a port. They don't come with the, with the actual lens ports anymore. Unfortunately, you have to buy a lens port um, and you do have to buy the pistol grip attachment if you want that. But they're sort of the three options that you can get right now. Uh, you can find secondhand ones of any make of Aquatech housings, there's always lots of them, especially since the new ones came out about five, six months ago and everyone's been upgrading. But the problem is they don't often, I, I contacted them because I wanted to find a, a new upgrade, a new plate kit, but they're not actually making any of those anymore. If you want new, you, new plates, new cable kits, you have to buy the new housings, unfortunately. So this camera, guys, this is an absolute weapon. It does everything you need it to do. I have captured so many amazing images from land, from the surf. Um, I think I'll, I'll run, you know, would have ran, ran some through at the beginning of the video. And you know what, for fun, why don't we run through a few more images now, just so you guys can kind of see what results you can get with this camera. So guys, like I said, the F100 really is such an amazing camera to be able to do this sort of work. And you know, when you have companies like Salty Surf Housings, I was just saying that actually offer a new, brand new housing you can buy for this camera. It just shows you how popular the market is for shooting film in the water and using the F100. Because I tell you, a company would not offer a brand new housing for an old 1999 to 2006 film camera if people weren't using it a lot. And there are lots of people, fantastic camera, great lens selection, still affordable. Housings is just one of those things that you just got to cop it on the chin if that's what you want to do. You can hunt for secondhand ones. Um, but again, the worst thing is you need a good housing. If they, it's a crap housing or you're trying to DIY or jerry rig something at home, it's just, you know, they're made to withstand beatings, the elements, the pressure, the salt. They're made to, to be able to survive in the conditions you want to use these cameras in. That's why they're so expensive, guys, because they are well made. 
Uh, but again, if anyone has any questions, please reach out. I'm happy to answer. If you have any other serious questions, something that I maybe can't answer, reach out to any of the guys' Instagrams. I have linked in the bottom description of the video. Maybe ask them a question or check out their work. Right, I finished making this. Uh, the tide, I've been waiting for the uh, for the tide to drop because the swell was a little bit full this morning. I've already checked the surf. It's a bit fat. The tide should be dropped about now or another half an hour's time. So I'm going surfing. And if I'm lucky and it's good enough, which I think it might be, I'll be jumping out and shooting the F100 in about an hour's time. So enjoy, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.